Blind bought this fragrance. I was pretty disappointed by the opening at first, but now it is my signature scent and my most complimented fragrance yet. Pricey, but absolutely worth it. It's fruity, sweet, and sexy. Women love this fragrance. That was a review of the last fragrance that's going to feature on today's list. Today we are reviewing the highest rated summer fragrances, guys focusing mainly on designers. Of course, this season is coming up and we'll often go to Fragrantica, a notorious review platform website that, you know, a lot of us like to use, but it can be toxic. However, it can be quite useful to see the ratings on there. And you'll see the ratings for each fragrance as we're going through them today, guys. And each of these fragrances have to be seen as a summer fragrance based on the Fragrantica community themselves. So they have that little bar at the top of the uh, page where they show that people agree it's a summertime fragrance for the fragrance to be featured here today. So basically I'm going to see, you know, a lot of these fragrances are hyped up, they got high ratings, do I agree or disagree? And I'll let you know if I think you should have them or not have them in your collection. So let's begin the video. Jean-Paul Gaultier's Le Beau Le Parfum. So the original Le Beau was a quite an interesting fragrance, very simplistic. It was like a very clean, coconut, creamy, tonka bean, skin lotion kind of fragrance is how I describe it. I always kind of described it as a poor man's Chanel's Allure Homme Eau Extreme. So to my nose, it kind of wasn't that great unless you wanted a more simplified version of uh, Allure Homme Eau Extreme, something a bit more inoffensive, closer to the skin. I think the Le Parfum is a fantastic improvement and a fantastic flanker compared to the Eau de Toilette. And actually, I think Paradise Garden is even better. I actually really love that fragrance, even though it doesn't perform as well as this. But this takes the original coconut, the tonka bean, smooth, creamy coconut here, and makes it more interesting with notes like pineapple, powdery iris, as well as this uh, more elevated, uh, intense woods in here as well. So it's more of a, a, a substantial, robust, stronger fragrance with more character. It kind of just feels more like a complete fragrance whilst the Eau de Toilette kind of felt like, I don't know, it was more like a, a, a body mist maybe? Something that was just really there to be grab and go, dumb reach, inoffensive. But this is still versatile. This is more long lasting, around 10 hours with medium projection and it works great in the summertime. I think a lot of guys will leave, really love this fragrance. For me, it goes between a nine and a 10. I feel like the blend is very creative, but it's a little bit synthetic. So maybe I'll give this a, a nine and a half out of 10. But for a designer, Le Beau Le Parfum deserves the hype that it's getting right now. And I like the fact that in the summertime, you will really enjoy wearing this also in the evening times. So I feel like this works really well in the summertime for dates on a date night or let's say clubbing as well. I think it has a performance and the playfulness and the character for it as well. So it's a really great value for money fragrance because you get so much wearability out of it also. If you like fragrances like Le Beau Eau de Toilette, you like Chanel Allure Homme Eau Extreme, Oud for Honor and Glory by La Taffa, those are the kind of fragrances that I think if you like those, you'll like this as well. So definitely try it out if you like those. Kenzo Homme Eau de Parfum. So this is a very interesting aquatic fragrance, which by the way, was made by Quentin Bish, who is a fantastic perfumer, really making waves right now, no pun intended, uh, on the fragrance scene. He makes quite beautiful uh, aroma chemical based uh, fragrances that really project nicely, last a long time. And this is one of those as well. This is, I would say, a simplistic yet beautifully made more on the mature side aquatic. Let's say if you're 25 and up, this is the kind of age range that's generally gonna be suited for this fragrance. It's simplistic, but nicely done. Fig, suede, woods, and aquatics is how I describe this fragrance. Eight hours performance with a medium projection. This is a very classy aquatic. I'd say smooth, nicely blended. It's kind of like the Armani code of aquatics. If you like the Armani code DNA, like the original or even absolute, and you kind of want that as an aquatic, as a mature-esque kind of mature uh, aquatic you can wear all year round, then Kenzo Om Eau de Parfum is there. I like the fact that it's long lasting, it's unique, it's creative, it has a great perfumer behind it. So I think for a designer fragrance, this is really solid. 32% of people who watch School of Scent are subscribed to us. If you guys want to see our channel grow, to really help us out, click subscribe. Let's get that number to 40%. Thank you. Chanel's Allure Homme Edition Blanche. For many years, this has been one of the most highly praised summer fragrances out there. It has been highly rated for as long as I can remember. A lot of people question, you know, whether or not they should be getting the Eau de Toilette or the Eau de Parfum. As far as I know, guys, I think it's been a repackaging and I think they're only are Eau de Parfum bottles now. I don't think there's Eau de Toilettes anymore. So I think, you know, a lot of people ask, for me, this is an Eau de Parfum bottle. So as far as I can tell, only Eau de Parfum now exists uh, for the, uh, this uh, fragrance release. So go for that, guys. But this is a masterpiece in lemon perfumery. If you want lemon, lavender, woods, a bit of vanilla in here, almost a creaminess to it, being compared to lemon meringue pie, 
this is one of the best to do it in citrus perfumery. It is elegant, beautifully balanced, beautifully blended. It has this sort of airiness and carefree aspects to it. It's beautiful Chanel perfumery through and through. I guess six hours performance was pretty good. Spray this on your clothes, get 100 ml. If you can't get this on discount really, Chanel's very hard to find this discount, but I think it's worth it personally. And you can try it in store anyways. I think if you like fragrances that are lemon focused, let's say you like Dior Homme Cologne, any of the other Allure Homme's, you're gonna love this and you have to try it in my opinion. I think this is a masterpiece and deserves a high rating. The original YSL Lom. So even though this is a notoriously bad performer, I think people still give us high ratings because it smells absolutely gorgeous. I said it in our recent video that this is a 10 out of 10 fragrance, if you don't mind reapplying. Beautiful, handsome, warm, ginger, woody, amber perfumery is how I describe this. A little bit soapy, professional. I feel like this is the most handsome man in the office would wear this fragrance essentially. If you want compliments, you want a nice sillage that lasts about three to four hours, fair enough. I still think this is a fantastic fragrance. I wouldn't give this a 10 out of 10 because it does have the performance issues, but I do think it's a masterpiece. It's a classic that's probably been gutted by reformulations, unfortunately, like uh, La Nuit de L'Homme. But if you do like La Nuit de L'Homme, you're gonna love this fragrance. It shares a very similar DNA, of course. If you enjoy fragrances like Bleu de Chanel, I think you'll like this as well. I just feel like they have a similar vibe. This is more bright and easy to wear in the summertime, definitely. And I think, yeah, I think this is just a very safe, handsome fragrance. If you don't mind performance issues, this is a very safe blind buy, in my opinion. Dior Homme Sport 2021. Another fairly safe blind buy, actually. I wouldn't say it's as safe as uh, YSL's Lom, and obviously every blind buy has some risk to buy with your discretion, guys. But I do think Dior Homme Sport 2021 is a very safe, handsome fragrance again, but this one actually performs at least, which is very nice. You can look at the note breakdown. I don't really describe it as a note breakdown describes it exactly. I call this an orange fragrance, even though orange is not listed. I would say this is like an orange woody amber perfume. It has that sharpness, that zing from the LME as well as the pink pepper in here. So it has this freshness, crisp brightness. It is a very handsome fragrance once again. I feel like, again, you can wear this, be a handsome man in the office, handsome man at university. And uh, you know, it works really well as a safe fragrance. It lasts eight hours in medium projection, but it works as a versatile, most of the year round scent as well. I don't think it works that great in the winter time, but all the other seasons it works great, has great performance, making it good value for money as well, even though it's Dior price tag, I think it's really a, a great fragrance. I think this is better than the original Dior 2020. I feel like it's very similar to that fragrance, but this feels more complete. I've always said that, guys. I feel like this is the more complete version of Dior Homme 2020. But if you do like Dior Homme 2020, you'll love this fragrance. If you like YSL's Lom, you'll love this fragrance as well. If you enjoy uh, orange, Esque fragrances like uh, Terre d'Hermes, I think you'll enjoy this fragrance also. So if you like woody citrus fragrances that make you smell handsome and masculine, try out Dior Homme Sport 2021 this summertime. And lastly, Lafayette Street's Bond Number no. 9. I wanted to include one niche fragrance in this list, and this is actually the fragrance that the initial review I was reading at the beginning of this video was referring to. So this is sort of like, I would say, La Nuit de L'Homme had a baby with Parfum de Marley's Percival crisp, sweet apple mixed with this woody and broxen and ambers in here. It is sexy, sweet and seductive, but yet bright and balanced enough to be worn in the summertime as well. You guys saw that on Fragrantica. You know, that's my criteria for this video. And this is a very sexy fragrance. I would say this is blind buy friendly as well, if you know you're spending niche price tags for a designer-esque fragrance. It's like that, that review at the beginning said, you will get compliments with this, you will get noticed with this. Will, this will make you smell very sexy, handsome. This is a very easy to love fragrance, but yes, it is designer-esque. But hey, I still think this smells really attractive. And I think it's unique enough to the point that I actually, I got a full bottle for myself, as you can see here. And I, I get around eight to 10 hours of a soft and medium projection. So you know this is designer friendly or designer-esque. You know this is Ambroxan based. Uh, and you know what you're gonna get into essentially. But hey, if you like fragrances like Parfum de Maris Percival, La Nuit de L'Homme, you like fragrances like, let's say you like the mass appeal of the Invictus fragrances, you like the appeal of Aaron Terrence Hughes Guapo, who wants a slightly more, let's say, youthful version, something like that, you'll like this fragrance. I think this is a great all year round scent. So yes, it's designer-esque, but you're getting great wearability again, so much of the year round, you can wear this really nicely. It's a great signature in both the day and night. So pretty much guys, I agree with all the ratings really. I think they all deserve to be highly rated. Maybe my least favorite from these six might be Le Beau Le Parfum and Kenzo's Homme Eau de Parfum. I don't think they're bad per se, but just as a personal subjective opinion, maybe taking objectivity out of it now. And I think maybe my two favorites from this list 
are Chanel Allure Homme Edition Blanche and Dior Homme Sport. But hey, as I said, well, I think all of these are great. But what do you guys think? What do you think of the six fragrances highlighted today? And what are some other fragrances you'd like to see me uh, rate as well and review that are highly rated already on Fragrantica, especially summer fragrances? And do you think there are summer fragrances out there that are highly rated that don't deserve the hype? Or do you think that some fragrances, you know, you've tried out because they are so much hype, they're so highly rated, and you've been pleasantly surprised and really agreed with the hype? Let us know your thoughts and your experiences in the comments down below, guys. If you guys enjoyed this video, make sure to check out our previous summer fragrances this video. I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye.